Hi everybody, I'm Julie Good and this is my son Elisha. Hi, I'm going to be helping mommy today. We're here in the Good News Bus and we're going to share our favorite recipes and today is all about sourdough. We're making three videos today. I'm showing you how to feed sourdough starter, how to make sourdough bread, and we're going to be making sourdough cinnamon rolls. Okay, so you guys are gonna love this recipe. It is so easy. There's a one rise, no punch down, and um, so you're gonna really enjoy it. It'll make making bread a lot easier than probably what you're used to. For this recipe, you need to have sourdough starter. So you can get it from either Ma Pa Bakery, or you can get it online, or you could start your own sourdough starter. I have grown sourdough starter. Yes, this is real sourdough starter, and I am going to show you how to make that, but that's in the previous video. So you need to stop here, go back to my video that shows you how to feed sourdough starter, and um, then tomorrow after it's grown, you'll be at this stage. We have four easy ingredients. Ingredients. You're going to need filtered water, flour, salt, and sourdough starter. You're also going to need a big steel bowl or a big bowl, a fork to stir everything together with, and a measuring cup. This recipe will make four loaves of bread. <laughs> this is what sourdough starter looks like. Now you can see where it has risen up to this line and then it exhausted itself and has shrunk back down. This recipe is quite simple. It's one cup of sourdough starter, one cup of water, about three to four cups of flour, and one teaspoon of salt. That will make one loaf, but today I'm gonna make four loaves. And then I'm gonna split up the dough and I'm actually gonna use part of it to make sourdough cinnamon rolls. Sourdough starter. Then I'm going to take my water and pour it in the measuring bowl to get the remaining sourdough starter out of it. So we'll do four cups of water. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Now we're gonna add salt. <laughs> you wanna stir this? Mm -hmm. Here you go, you stir that all in. Make sure it's mixed well. Sourdough starter is a pain if you let the bowl sit and uh, you don't put some water in it. So once it's dry, it's like cement. So you do not want to leave your bowl to dry. So we're going to add one cup of flour at a time. So don't forget, we are timesing this recipe by four. four so there's going to be a lot of flour. So there's one. Here, Elisha, you want to add the flour? Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So that's two cups. How many is that? Three. All right. How many is that? Four. All right. I literally do everything by hand. For one, usually because we're in the bus, um, I don't have the power to run a mixer. I don't have the space to store a mixer. So I just figured, hey, this is a workout. When you're making four loaves of bread, a lot of time an electric mixer cannot handle it. So. These babies here, they can handle four loaves of bread. <laughs> so before we put in our ninth cup of flour, let's go ahead and just make sure that the eighth cup of flour is mixed in. The reason I use a fork is because it's 
a lot smaller than say a big spoon so I can kind of cut through the dough with a smaller utensil than a big utensil and it's not as hard on my arms okay you can add it Rain okay. coming through it's dropping bombs we've now added the ninth cup of flour and um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start using my hands at this point so usually I before putting my hands in the sticky dough I kind of get the flour on my fingers it'll help prevent the dough from sticking and with this motion I just kind of stir the flour in pour the whole thing in there okay just okay. do that We've now put the 10th cup of flour in, and as you can see, this, the dough is starting to hold together. It's not as sticky. So I could probably fit maybe another cup or two of flour in here, and I'm gonna show you the consistency of the dough because that's actually the most important thing, isn't on how much flour you add. You want the consistency of your dough to be right so that your bread won't be too dense. One more cup, huh? Okay, so the 11th cup of flour, we're gonna go ahead and okay. scoop the whole cup of flour out. Here. Good job. Okay, so I'm gonna take about half of that cup of flour and I'm gonna spread it out onto my surface here. I'm gonna take my dough and I'm gonna put it out onto my floured surface any remaining flour Oop. that was in the bowl. This is the consistency of the dough. It's soft, but it's still sticky. So now I am going to knead my dough and I'm gonna just kind of work the remaining flour into my dough. A lot of people actually don't even know how or what the term kneading means. So kneading is actually where you grab the outside of your dough and you just kind of fold it in half and push. And once the dough begins to become a little bit sticky, I'll pull some more flour in. And you just keep pulling from the outside. So it starts to become a little sticky as you can see. Mm -hmm. So then we just pull some more flour in from the outside. Okay, not too much, just a little bit. And we work it in. Kneading your dough is one of the most important parts to bread making. And the reason is because the stretching and the pulling and squishing of the dough is what actually causes the dough to rise properly. So I've been kneading my dough for about four minutes. So you'll notice that the elasticity of my dough is greatly increasing. Okay, so it's not ripping as often as it was. It's not as sticky and it bounces back. I feel. Okay, so that's a good sign for your bread. So we're gonna go ahead and knead our dough for about five more minutes. I feel that the longer I knead my dough, the better bread that I get. So let's go ahead and work at it for a bit. So many people have wondered how I stay in shape. Why am I so slender? I have seven children. Well, this is one way here. Who needs the gym when you can make bread and make your family happy at the same time? Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, that was a workout. Now that we're done with kneading our dough, we're gonna go ahead and lightly flour the surface of our table. Then I'm gonna place my dough on top. Now we're gonna allow our dough to rest for 25 to 30 minutes. And in the meanwhile, Elisha and I are gonna clean up our mess and we're gonna grease our bread pans and get them prepared for putting our dough in. Here's Here's three. 
and we have our butter. So now we're gonna grease our bread pans. I'm gonna beat you, Elisha. I'm done. 25 minutes is up and we're gonna divide our dough. I'm gonna divide my dough into thirds and then I'm gonna place one third of it off to the side to make cinnamon rolls. You kind of pull the outsides of the dough and push them on into the center, like so. Okay, do that one. And make a nice tight. <laughs> I'll, I'll, do okay, I'll give you the next one. It makes a nice smooth skin. We'll place it in the pan with the tucked side to the bottom. There you go, put it in the pan. It's heavy. Yeah. There you go, here's your new home. Here. Next I'm gonna put my loaves off to the side in a place where they can rise. It needs to be warm and it needs to not have a draft. If it is too cold, then it'll take longer for your bread to rise. So if you can find a warm place to put it, then that's the best. Usually if you put it in your oven with the oven light on, or you can also put a warm um, bowl of water underneath your bread pans, and that will help them rise quicker. Usually it takes about three to four hours to rise. You want it to double in size. That's when you'll know that it's ready to bake. Set a timer for three and a half hours. We'll check on it, make sure it's risen enough. So three and a half to four hours has passed now and we're gonna check out to see how our bread's doing. Has it risen enough? Oh, that's looking pretty good. Ooh. That one might have been closer to maybe a draft. It didn't rise as much, that but that's much okay. Better. We're looking good. Next, we're gonna preheat our oven to 400 degrees. And once that's done, then we can put our bread in and they should be risen a little bit more at that point. And then we'll bake it. Our flame is lit. Okay, so the kids have returned from playing outside. It's a Saturday today, so they were outside for hours. What are you guys doing? Um, I'm shuffling cards right now. I'm playing solitaire. I start from, it's like, I'm going to die. Mom. It's like, 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 it's stuck on solitaire. Okay, the oven is preheated. Now to put the bread in. It was there, like that. Now what? Okay, so now we'll bake the bread for 40 minutes, but at the 20 minute mark, we're gonna turn it around so that it bakes evenly. The 
timer's gone off, so it's time to flip the bread around so that it'll bake evenly. Sure. I need it. Woohoo! One, two, three. See, it's browning on one side, and not on the other. So it's time to flip it. Yes. See the bread, the battle baked. Take the bread out. Does it look good? Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's one. Do you know what you're supposed to do? There's the other one. Huh? And voila. Okay, so. Beautiful, fresh, homemade bread. So in about one minute, I'm going to take the bread out of the loaf pan and let them cool. So if I leave them in the loaf pan, then they'll kind of get soggy on the bottom side and I don't want that. I'm sure you wouldn't either. That is the beautiful sound of fresh homemade baked sourdough bread. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this recipe. I hope so too. Bye.